Good evening. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled meeting for the Park and Rec Commission for Wednesday, April 16th to order. I'd like to ask uh, Lori Greenberg to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Jackie. I couldn't get up. <laughs> Chair Palmer. Here. Vice Chair Davis. Here. Commissioners Greenberg. Here. Laura. Here. Marshall. Here. Nigel. Here. Pierce. Here. Zamatia. Here. And Youth Commissioner Chin. Here. <laughs> <clears throat> Item C, approval of the minutes. Have all commissioners had a chance to uh, take a look at the minutes? If so, I'd like a, a motion and a second. Dave? I uh, move that we uh, approve the minutes of March 19th as received. Uh, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> okay, the minutes will stand approved as posted. Um, moving on to item D, unfinished business. Uh, the first item on our agenda tonight under unfinished business is the presentation of the Community Recognition Award. And this happens every April, and uh, uh, I'm going to read a little statement about uh, Ruth Pallas. Uh, as the current chair for the Park and Recreation Commission, it's my distinct honor and privilege to be able to present this year's recipient of the Community Recognition Award to Ruth Pallas. But first, a few words about Ruth and her history with the city of San Bruno. Ruth grew up in Wyoming and moved to San Bruno in 1960. When her children were young, Ruth served in the PTAs for El Crystal Elementary School and Parkside Middle School in San Bruno, and then with PTAs for the San Mateo Union High School District. During this time, she was also a Brownie leader and the committee chairperson for the Boy Scouts. Ruth also worked, <coughs> excuse me, Ruth also worked with San Bruno's Project Pride Committee, where she served as co-chair of the annual Easter Egg Hunt and Halloween costume, costume Parade. Along with her husband, Chris, Ruth assisted with a myriad of official duties while he served on the San Bruno Park School District Board of Trustees and the San Bruno City Council over a period of 34 years. Ruth became active in the San Bruno Senior Center while it was still at Edgemont School and in 1986, was active in the cornerstone placement of the newly erected Senior Center. She was appointed to the first Senior Advisory Board and eventually became President of the Senior Center's Board of Directors. She is also a past President and Vice President of AARP and has chaired many of the club's events. She is one of the founding members of the San Bruno Senior Center's Computer Club that originally began with 10 members and now has over 150 active members. Ruth has also taught beginner computer classes as well as edited the AARP newsletter. She also volunteers, she continues to volunteer many hours at the San Bruno Senior Center as a receptionist, greeter, and with the senior lunch program. Ruth continues to be very active with the San Bruno American Legion Auxiliary and has served as its president. She has volunteered at the VA hospital, assisted with Toys for Tots, the San Bruno American Legion fireworks booth, and as the publisher of the American Legion newsletter. Ruth has also served on the Avenue of Flags Committee at the Golden Gate National Cemetery in San Bruno. That made me tired just reading. <laughs> as you can see, Ruth Palace is a true gem in the community of San Bruno and is well-deserving of this year's Community Recognition Award presented by the San Bruno Parks and Recreation Commission. Thanks, Ruth. Before we give uh, Ruth a chance to say a few words, I wanted to know if anybody in the audience wanted to uh, share anything with us. Uh, if not, then I'd ask my fellow commissioners if any of them have anything to say. And if none of them do, then it's going to be up to you, Ruth, to say a few words to us. So anybody in the audience want to share a few words? 
I'll just say that I'm, oh. I'm her. Uh, excuse me, did you go to the podium? You have to yeah, go to the podium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Go, it's not that big. Oh, uh, camera. Uh, uh, hi, I'm her god, uh, uh, god in law. Get it straight. Um, I just wanted to say she's just always been an inspiration. Um, she. Uh, was instrumental in raising our two young boys um, while we were working. And she's, I think, just been such a great role model. And she's always been family, big help to the family and community. And, you know, just has a biggest heart that, you know, more than anyone I ever know. So she's just, as you can see, she's always so giving. And I, I just, we're, we're so blessed to have her because she really has been just a huge inspiration. And, role model for us and for our kids and her grandkids and, and everyone. She's just amazing and I couldn't say enough nice things about her. So that's all I wanted to say. We love you and we're all blessed to have her in our lives. Thank you very much. You certainly can. How are you going to stop him? <laughs> I happen to be Ruth's husband <laughs> of 56 years, and it's every day has been a honeymoon. And it was Ruth's fault that I got involved in politics. <laughs> and way back in 1971, and then I've been in politics. But I'll tell you what, when I married Ruth, I hit the jackpot. She's a wonderful mother, a citizen. And she's everything you expect a woman to be, a good woman. And I love her, and I'll say congratulations, Ruth. I think my admiration for Ruth was, well, indicated in my nominating her. I've watched her over many, many years, seen what she's done for this city. She was an inspiration to me, and I want to thank her for all she has done. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Laura. Um, I'm her granddaughter, and um, her work ethic Wow. <laughs> um, I'm always inspired from my grandmother, and she's given me so much love and support over the years. And I just want to say thank you, and thank you for everything you've done for everybody else. And um, I have probably half the work ethic that she has, yeah. and that's a lot. Because <laughs> I always work. <laughs> thank you. And now, do any of our fellow commissioners have any comments? Commissioner Nigel? Um, Ruth, you know me. I was uh, one of the three members of the selection committee. And I want you to know that there were so many wonderful nominees. And when I personally and my colleagues read uh, the nomination, uh, it was just unbelievable, just as Chairman uh, Palmer stated in his presentation. And we're very proud of you. I remember you when I was a young teacher with black hair and I was thin. And um, you, ever, you did everything quietly and everything was at a high level and you just kept on going. And besides, as an Eagle Scout, being a Scout Chair, I know that's a huge job in itself. Congratulations and we're very proud of you. And when it came up for a vote, it was unanimous. Commissioners? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Greenberg? Sure, through the chair. I've been on several committees with Ruth, with Ruth rather, and I will tell you, she is a princess, a queen. She's the most generous, most giving. She'll do anything for her family, anything for our community, and everywhere I go, she's always involved. She has her hands in something, and she takes such good care of her family, especially Chris, who sometimes uh, gives her a little trouble, just a little, Chris. <laughs> but, but Ruth, 
Hi, I'm so proud to know you. I've been over your home, uh, at your house for Greek Easter, where they, you open it up to everyone, and you're the most gracious person that I've ever met. So this, this honor is well overdue, and you deserve it. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ruth, say a few words to us, please. I can use. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I can usually just uh, get up and talk, but this is such an honor. I'm sure I'm going to get all befuddled and say da da da. <laughs> so I'm going to read my report, and I want to thank everybody. This is so great, and I want to tell you that I have three Boy Scout uh, grandchildren that have Eagle Scouts. So. It, Taking care of was really paid off. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, because I could say this, but I thought I have to write it. You know, to make sure I get everything done. Bottom of my heart for giving me this uh, community service award. I am so honored. Uh, I'm going to tell you for the first time I volunteered, the my uh, my services. I was about nine years old, and I was raised on a farm. I was a uh, farmer's daughter, which meant I had to take a bus early in the morning, 8 o'clock, to go to school, and so the school let out at 4 o'clock, and we had to take a bus home in the afternoon. But the bus I had to do a double route. He did the first, the closest one first, and the second one later, so I always had that a half hour. And I asked the teacher one day if I could help her wash down the blackboards and shake the erasers, and she used to, it was Lady. She said, oh, of course. And that was my first voluntary job. And I was about nine years old, and I loved it. As a matter of fact, she ended up being my favorite teacher. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> um, I enjoyed helping people of all ages. I have uh, a good friend that wrote a, bu a button for me that says no. <laughs> and I never used it. And I don't know whether <laughs> just say no. was trying to get me to slow down or what, but I, I enjoyed everything I ever did. Um, my motto is, if you don't like it, don't do it. I've never taken a job that I just in, enjoy completely. Uh, so um, I enjoyed everything I have done. I really have, and I've enjoyed meeting so many people and so many nice people, really, and they've turned out to really be great friends. And that's you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my family here, and these, um, Elle and uh, Joe, they're from uh, these um, Avenue of Flags, which I've been very involved in, too, but it's so good to see you. And I'm very happy to accept this award, and I thank you. I thought, oh my gosh. This, this is a copy of the plaque that is on permanent display at the rec, inside the rec department. And it says Ruth Palace 2014. Right. Oh, then I get a loan. <laughs> and it's, it's my oh. pleasure to be able to present this to you as the recipient of oh. this year's Community Recognition Award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. I have to pause for photos now. Okay. Let me put this down, too. Congratulations, Ruth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, dear. Thank you all so much. Good job. Good job.
Well, you're certainly all invited to stay and watch the rest of the Park and Rec uh, Commission meeting, but uh, if you'd like to go, now is a good time. I'm going to move on. Thank you very much. Carolyn. Okay, we're still on item D, unfinished business. Number two, San Bernardino Lions request to improve the Portola Performing Arts Center. It's an oral report. Good evening. Um, last Tuesday night, we attended the part of the City Council meeting and presented to them the request from the San Bernardino Lions Club to redo the Portola Performing Arts in conjunction with the roof project that we've already budgeted for. City Council approved unanimously for them to move for, for the Lions Club to move forward with doing their improvements as well. Um, staff is working currently with the Public Works Department, Public Services Department, to start working on uh, the bid process for the roofing project, which has to go out to public bid. Um, the remainder of the work will be done by the Lions Club, and that will start um, at the conclusion of school this year, which is in June. Okay, thanks. Uh, any questions from the Commission? No? Okay, thank you, Danielle. Um, communications? I had none. None? No? Okay. Uh, item F, uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. What? You're the public right now. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, new Item G, new business, uh, organics program and giveaway event on April 19th, and that's probably Danielle. Um, as you all are aware, in January, the City of San Bruno began the organics program where we recycle as well as um, or organic composting. And um, be, as part of the benefit of that program to the community, the community can come out and get a couple times a year um, nutrient-rich soil uh, compost at a, a designated location. That program will happen um, this coming weekend on the 19th. You do have uh, a blue flyer in front of you that will have um, the information. It was also in the brochure and we'll make sure and put it on our Facebook page. But on um, Saturday, April 19th at eight, from 8 to 11 in the morning back behind Beckner Shelter, there will be a location for um, residents to pull up, bring their own bucket, get a bucket of soil and bring it home to start their spring planting. And it's free, just bring your own bucket. Okay, thank you. I think, uh, I think the whole program is going well. Um, from what I've heard from my neighbors, it certainly has cut down on the amount of uh, solid waste that's going into the landfill. So does the commission have, any commissioners have any comments? Questions for Daniel? Yes, uh, through the chair. Um, I love this organics program. I, I follow it at home, so um, I think it's great. I, I know it's very difficult for us to do it, um, it in, in our parks. In our buildings, I, I see the containers. The containers are fantastic. I always look, I never know what to throw away, you know, look for green, uh, the blue, or the red. So uh, I love that in our facilities. Our parks is, is going to be very, very difficult. But some of the um, baseball fields, I notice some of them have recycling um, bins and some don't. Are we going to be on board for uh, recycling bins at all, all the baseball fields? Because a lot of kids, you know, they have their snack and they have containers and they need to put that in recycling. So maybe that's for there Danielle should, or for D Dan. Yeah, there should be um, recycling bins at all the parks, but we will double check and make sure that there are. No. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, Can I Danielle. just add one thing is um, the uh, Recology will be going to City Council in June to report back on the first quarter of the program and how it's performing and how San Bruno is performing. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Danielle. Okay, we're on to uh, item H, reports from the staff. And uh, the first one is a summer preview from D. Kranitz. Hi, good evening, Commission. So. Summer's coming, and you guys know what that means. So um, I'm here tonight to, to talk a little bit about our summer day camp program that we have, of course, going on this summer once again. 
Uh, we had 200 participants on a weekly basis that came through the camp program uh, last summer, which um, was a record high for the program. Um, camp is um, offered to youth ages three and a half to 13. And as you can see, they're divided into specific age groups with our mini kaleidoscope program, camp kaleidoscope, and our adventure camp program for our teens there. Um, we also offer extended camp for children who want to come as early as 7.30 in the morning and stay as late as 6. Um, of course, uh, with camp, um, one of the things we pride ourselves in, it's a tr traditional day camp program in which um, that means there's field trips, sports, arts and crafts, indoor-outdoor games, swimming, and of course we have our special events on Fridays, which um, the whole camp comes together and um, we participate um, in a great big event like a water carnival day and, um, and whatnot. So um, this year, um, some of the highlights, of course, are our field featured uh, field trips. We're going to go to the Exploratorium. We're bringing in other um, educational pieces um, this year for camp. Um, some of the requests from the parent surveys um, in which they want to see a little bit more of um, within our camp program. Um, <clears throat> Also, uh, with the camp program, we're looking for volunteers, uh, those who want to um, be a part of our leader and training program. Um, we are looking for teens 13 years and older. And um, also, I want to add, uh, with summer, uh, the San Bruno Park Pool is open through September 28th this year. And also, as a side note, for our centennial celebrations, Celebration concerts in the park will extend into September again every Friday in August and now in September uh, for the summer season and um, Movies in the park will also follow after the concerts in the park in September So I wanted to add that as well <coughs> That concludes my report for this evening. Do you have any questions? Questions comments from the Commission I have a comment Commissioner Nigel. I know two youngsters uh, that were, is it called the CIT program? LIT. Or the training? Leader in training, the LIT yes, program. Yes, that program. Uh -huh. And they were just raving about working with our staff and how uh, empowered they were and meeting the kids. And it was all positive. And I was really proud of our department for that. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Anyone else? Thanks, Dee. Our next report is from uh, our Parks Field Supervisor, Dan Barros. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Barros. I am the uh, Parks Field Supervisor. I uh, just want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, some of the projects we've worked on over the past year, uh, as well as some of the upcoming um, potential projects that we could um, be doing in our foreseeable future. Uh, the first one, or one of the ones we're most proud of this year, is uh, we've spent a lot of time up at Crestmore Field. Um, for those of you who have played soccer up there, you might have noticed it's uh, in probably the best shape it's ever been in. Uh, we worked hand-in-hand -hand with AYSO um, to do a major top dressing project up there. Uh, AYSO was able to um, contribute a lot of funding to hire a uh, contractor to top dress about 175 tons of soil and sand. Uh, spread out over both fields um, and following their efforts we were up there using our labor to uh, roll the fields with one ton rollers and this maintenance has really helped uh, fill in lots of hazardous ruts and divots and things like that for potential sprained ankles and broken ankles and things like that. Uh, it's also been very beneficial to the soil and uh, keeping everything green and, um, and safe to play on. Um, We've also adopted a, uh, a maintenance strategy with AYSO moving forward, um, especially for Crestmore Field and, uh, and also Parkside. Um, like we talked about our organics program earlier, uh, we will be working hopefully with Recology to uh, use compost to top dress the fields in the future. And this will serve very cost effective both for the city and for AYSO. Uh, so uh, our next item of business is uh, 7th Avenue Park. Um, we were fortunate enough to have our rear fence replaced by uh, the San Francisco Airport. Uh, their property is adjacent to the rear of the park. Uh, they put in a nice wrought iron fence for us. They were experiencing um, some, some people kind of uh, loitering in their 
property, so they, they felt it was a good idea to do this uh, throughout the parks. They also did something similar like this in Millbrae as well. Um, and out of it, we got a nice fence. Uh, they removed some declining trees that were along the fence line, and we were able to plant all new trees as part of Arbor Day. Uh, also along the right side of the park, the southern end, uh, we were able to put in a brand new uh, a redwood fence, and we took out a lot of old declining shrubs, uh, and our plan is to extend some wood chips in that area, uh, kind of zero scaping the area a little bit with uh, adding a few more trees in the future and extending the, the turf underneath the existing trees, uh, which isn't pictured at the moment. Um, what this will do is it'll really open up the park. It'll be give a nice, clean, crisp look. Um, hopefully we won't have homeless sleeping behind the bushes any longer. And uh, it'll also be very maintenance friendly. Um, and uh, the great separation, we're all very excited about the new Posey Park. Um, it's looking pretty good compared to what it used to look like. And uh, I, I, just today I saw people going up and down the stairs and using the parks and sitting by the fountain. So it's really nice to see that. And uh, we're really excited about it. Uh, also part of the Great Separation Project is the First Avenue uh, vegetation and pedestrian walkway. And um, as you can see, they are nearing completion on that as well. And uh, every, all the irrigation has been installed. And it looks like they're just ready to plant some plant material pretty soon. And so our potential projects moving forward um, that we are generally excited about um, Commodore Park, we're exploring some, uh, some ways to replace the existing playground there. Uh, part of our renovation phase back in 2005, this was fairly new at the time and it wasn't replaced back then. So um, I think it's about time we, we, uh, we move forward with this one. We're just working, trying to work with the right people and, and get things done as best we can. Um, we also have a lot of maintenance and projects we'd like to see done on our ball fields. Uh, one is we would really like to get them professionally graded and laser leveled and resurfaced uh, for m multiple reasons, for safety issues, as well as uh, when, when we do have inclement weather and rain, we're experiencing a lot of pooling uh, because of the uneven surfaces that are existing in our ball fields. And, it have, and if we do some major grading and resurfacing, we will have um, you know, a lot less turnaround time from when it rains to getting you know user groups back on the field and playing their games rather than canceling when the sun's shining, um, and uh, you know also with ball fields we're looking to rebuild a lot of batters boxes that are just kind of litter boxes with lots of sand in them right now. Uh, so this will we'll, we'll use uh, you know lots of clay to do that and that will be an in-house job. And um, next uh, we're exploring some some ways to do a complete renovation at Lara Field um, in conjunction with the user groups, Colt, DiMaggio, and Legion, who use the field a lot. Uh, we've had a good working relationship with those organizations, and we look, we look forward to um, hopefully doing a nice big project out there pretty soon. And um, lastly, like I already talked about, the composting a little bit. And if things go well, testing out, you know, using Crestmore as a testing site, if things go well, we'll move on to other fields like Bel Air and Parkside and uh, even City Park in the outfields of Diamond 2 and 3 and Lara Field as well. And uh, another in-house project unrelated to ball fields is uh, we're looking to completely renovate and replant the plant material on the planting triangle uh, entrance to San Mateo Avenue where the marquee existingly sits. Um, it's just very old and outdated and um, rather than trying to um, work with what we have out there, we feel it's better to uh, completely redo the area uh, with things that are a little bit more drought tolerant, you know, due to the uh, recent drought that we've been experiencing. And it'll, we're looking to plan a lot of things with a lot more color to be a little bit more inviting for such a premier area in San Bruno. Um, and I think that concludes my report for this evening. So if there's any questions, please feel free. Any of the commissioners have questions, comments for Dan? To the chair. Commissioner Davis. First of all, thank you for a thorough report. That was really well done. Um, I have a question on space. I, I, I'm not sure that the correct term, but it's space that's not, it's city space, city, city property. Um, one in particular is an entrance to Shelter Creek off of San Bruno Avenue. 
and there's an area next to the freeway entrance, which is city, supposedly city property across from the gas station. How does that stuff get maintained, and is there some sort of program that it does, you know, somebody does come by on a monthly basis in terms of reads? Because we'd gotten a complaint from Shelter Creek to trim it, which we did, but it's sort of back to the same situation. And, and really, it's just weeds. So it would be great if we can plan something there or something they could avoid to, to get rid of all the weeds and plan something that has a nice aesthetic entrance. Yeah, that's a, that's a good alternative. Um, really, the way we maintain that area currently is we, uh, it's part of our fire mitigation program. Um, generally, it's only done just a few times a year. Um, with our current staffing situation, that's really all we can um, right you know, really afford to have out there in, in that amount of time. Um, but, you know, we, we monitor the situation. Uh, we drive by it from time to time. We, we see how bad it is. And really, there's Caltrans property um, butting up to it. You know, it's a really small patch that's our responsibility. And then there's some that Shelter Creek. So it's, it's kind of a fine line with three different players in that one field. So um, we try to do our part as best we can and as often as we can as time permits. So, so a suggestion was, has the city reached out to, let's say, Shelter Creek that says, would you like to adopt that property as part of your maintenance, let them plan something and make it something that they could, I mean, if you look at the grounds around Shelter Creek, it's actually, it's a beautiful complex and they've done a well, they've done a job, well, good job in maintaining that. So that might be an interest, just like we see with the ballparks. I think it's another direction to go to say, you know, how about improving it, planting? To the chair. I would like to say a few things. Uh, I'm proud to be on a park and recreation, and I'm sure everyone here is too. And watch our staff in the office and in the fields, helping the young people, uh, giving them leadership, taking them out and, uh, and paying attention to them. I think it shows how great this San Bruno recreation is. And the, the way we have uh, taken care of the young people and give them good leadership, and I want to thank the staff and everyone for the hard work they do. Thank you, Commissioner thank you. Lara. Uh, Commissioner Pierce? Yes, I also want to congratulate you, Dan. That was an excellent report. And uh, I had a quick question. I know we've discussed this. I, I was wondering if a decision had been made. Concerns with water rationing? For this summer, you mentioned once that we're going to be experiencing 30%. Uh, yeah, we haven't um, calculated the exact figure yet, but we will be decreasing uh, slightly than what we're normal used to seeing up there dur throughout the summer. Um, what that figure is, we haven't come to a conclusion on that yet, but we are working on it. Do you and see any impact? I mean, you've done a tremendous job. I hate to see us lose. Yeah, we parks lose what. What we've done, what we've I think th I think that's one of the reasons why we're having a, a tough time deciding on the exact figure because we'd, we'd hate to lose the investment that we have up there. Um, okay. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we, we feel the need to, to do something. So we're just not sure exactly what that is yet. And you'll keep us informed? Exactly, yes. Okay. I had a quick follow-up question, if I could. Um, Commissioner Davis did mention the Adopt-A-Park program. I'm still curious have we made any progress on that because I know several groups that do want to adopt the park and take responsibility for helping working alongside the city. We, we will be presenting that to the Commission at your next meeting. Great. Thank you. Um, and you had one other comment. Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission, if I may, uh, staff for about the last six to eight weeks has been working on a water conservation plan both for parks and for facilities. So Dan and Renee have been working on putting something together. Our thought, Danielle's thought and mine, is that we would share that with the commission. And then um, if it's uh, something that we can present to the city council, also share that information with them. Fortunately, it appears that the peninsula has a, a more limited amount of pressure than maybe the, the East Bay and other parts of the Bay Area for water conservation. But we were trying to get ahead of the curve in anticipation that there might be some sort of mandatory reduction uh, so that we can give the commission and then ultimately the city council a range of options and consequences for those choices. Great. Okay, thank you. Any other comments for Dan? So on behalf of the commission, I'd like to thank both Dan and Dee for taking the time to come out tonight and uh, 
prevent, uh, prevent, present us with, uh, with reports. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, we're on to item H1C. It's our third uh, staff report tonight, and this is a centennial update from uh, Carrie Burns, Interim Community Services Director. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I'm gonna keep my comments fairly brief and then um, turn it back to the commission for a more detailed report on the community day in the park. But I did wanna share a, a few upcoming events with not only the commission, but with the community that's hopefully watching at home. Um, this Saturday, starting at 10 o'clock in front of the Starbucks along San Mateo Avenue, we will have John Alita, our com and, uh, Assistant Community Services Director, and David Woltering, our Community Development Director, hosting a architectural walk of uh, locations throughout the community. And you can go to the Centennial website to identify a map and some narrative around the sites that they'll be visiting. So we would very much welcome and encourage the community to come out for that. It should be a beautiful day and it should be very interesting, a little bit of San Bruno history. We're also in the process of um, putting together a scavenger hunt. We don't yet have the details fully developed, so I don't have uh, detailed information to share with you, but I would appreciate it if you would put it on your calendar, Sunday, July 20th from 12 noon to 3 p.m. And we'll make sure to publicize that event and the details of it as those specifics uh, are determined. Following on the heels of that would be uh, the historic walk. And we'll be doing that in conjunction with the San Mateo County History Museum. That will be held on Saturday, August 16th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. And again, we're still in the process of developing the significant events and that may um, both be a walk and perhaps a van tour as well, depending on the sites that we locate and identify. Uh, I'm gonna reserve any comment on the community day in the park uh, in anticipation of Vice Chair Davis making her report, but then would also like to mention um, that there will be a centennial gala, which will be the culmination of the year-long celebration on December 6th at Skyline College. Again, the details of that are still underway. Danielle and I met with uh, representatives from Skyline about two weeks ago on the rainiest day this year. Um, we went up there and a very good meeting. The caterer was there and um, the event coordinator was there as well. So I think that the community can look forward to a pretty exciting and, and enjoyable event on the 6th of December. I also wanted just to mention, if you're not um, ha taking an opportunity to go to the city's website and to click on the Centennial um, tab in particular, you might wanna do that. We've updated it, there's a lot more information. I think you'll find it much more um, viewer easy to read and you'll find it probably pretty interesting. And when you look at it, you're gonna see that now available at the Recreation Center and at the city clerk's office at City Hall, is Centennial Apparel and Memorabilia. We have sweatshirts with hoods and zippers. Uh, we have polo <coughs> shirts, water bottles, coffee mugs, tote bags, and coffee mugs. I said coffee mugs. License, License plate holders. I knew I forgot <laughs> something. Uh, all available for sale at, um, again, City Clerk's Office at City Hall and at the Recreation Center. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, otherwise. I look forward to Vice Chair Davis's report. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, anybody have any questions, comments for Carrie? Yeah. No? Okay, we're on to uh, Commissioner Reports A, and uh, this is oh, an update. Excuse me. Oh. I just wanted to speak on the Centennial Day in the Park. Okay. I'm sorry. Be my guest, Commissioner Davis. I, I thought it, you had some other questions regarding the other events. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, pr to make a comment about the Centennial Community Day in the Park, which is September 27th. And I'm actually pretty excited about this event. It's an opportunity for all residents in our community, um, whether you're young or old or young at heart, um, to come out and to enjoy uh, lots of activities. Um, you know, some key points are from carnival rides to carnival games to, you know, three-legged races to good food. Um, and also to bring the historical aspect to that event as well. It's an opportunity to view um, the, any of the displays that have been on display throughout this throughout this the year. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, there's been a really good c group that's working on the plannings for this program. I think the direction would be to go to the website as well. 
Also the email address, the centennial at sanbrno.ca.gov if you have questions that can be directed to the, to the correct uh, groups that are working on these programs. But I love any input, suggestions, ideas. Um, I can't wait for the day for the residents to drive down Crystal Springs Road and to see an event at San Bernardino Park that reminds us of all being a kid when we were five years old. And mommy, can I go to the can I go to the park tomorrow? Can I go to the park tomorrow? Because I can't wait to be there. So looking forward to that event. Thank you, De Commissioner Nigel. Um, I'd like to echo what uh, Commissioner Davis just said. We put that down on your calendar, Saturday. September 27th, um, I believe it starts at 10.30 and will go to about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, there are committees working, and I'm very proud of the fact that our subcommittee, led by Vice uh, Mayor Rico Medina, is doing a great job, but especially Commissioner Laura Davis, who is taking a real leadership role in doing many, many things and guiding our committee. I'm also proud of our commission. Uh, the majority of the people sitting at this table now are active members on that committee, and we're really committed. We meet almost every Thursday evening. And uh, uh, Terry, uh, Terry, are there uh, uh, people that are able to join that committee? Or I'm not sure. So at the last city <coughs> community centennial meeting, I believe we held that on March 22nd, there were a number of um, interested citizens and business owners who signed up to also participate in support of the delivery of the community day in the park. And I believe they were invited to join you at the last um, subcommittee meeting. That's or, correct. And I, Vice Chair Davis, I, if there are more people interested in participating and choose to sign up through the Centennial website, you would certainly invite them to participate as well? Yes, our next meeting will be Thursday at 6 o'clock. And one of the things we did at our last meeting was to assign chair people for certain positions within the committee. For example, I've stepped up to be the chairperson for rides, somebody else has stepped up to be the chairperson for entertainment. And each of us, as chair people for each of the individual heads, will need that support. So we're looking for, of course, more input from the community and more support from the community. And through the chair, if I may, um, Vice Chair Davis, the next meeting is on May 1st, no, or 20, April 24th. 24th. Okay, so not tomorrow. Um, yes, not tomorrow, following, the following Thursday. Thursday. Six o'clock, April 24th. At the rec the rec so maybe say uh, that one more continue. time, I, I'm uh, sorry. We, sorry. I, uh, <clears throat> also, uh, one of the things that we're looking for, if they, and I'm talking to the people out in the television audience, uh, we're trying to, we know that we have time capsules located throughout the city. We know of one of them, but as the conversation developed, people were saying there could be two, three, or four of them. So if anyone has information, please uh, contact the department or the city clerk and let us know about that. Very, very important. I'm excited. We're going to have uh, food trucks and uh, games and swimming pool activities. There's no end to it, and um, it's really exciting. We want you to promote it with your neighbors. Bring everybody down to the park on Saturday, September 27th. Thank you, Commissioner Nigel. Vice yeah. Davis. Thank you. I just want to make a clarification. So our next planning meeting for this Community Day in the Park is Thursday, April 24th at 6 p.m. at the San Bruno Recreation, San Bruno Recreation Center. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Um, I take it that was our commissioner report, our update on centennial activities, or did you have more? That was perfect. That was okay, it. Okay, perfect. Okay. I have another. Okay, one. Commissioner Nigel. Well, I want to show everybody this. I don't know if the TV can, but this is the pin for our hundred. And I'm very proud of the fact that I have the 75th. That's when I used to have black hair. <laughs> and uh, so I have two of these pins. Hopefully, I'll still be around for the 125th. But uh, the last one was really exciting. I promise you, this one's going to be 10 times better. The other thing I want to talk about, and I do this, and so do many of my colleagues <coughs> every year, 
this is such a great thing. And Danielle and the staff, I want to compliment you. Not only is this so easy to read, and I, I see the ones from our adjacent cities and other places throughout the state, the, the offerings and the activities and the way it's presented is wonderful, and I want to compliment the department. Thank you, Commissioner Nigel. Um, any other comments, questions? The no. Chair? Go, uh, Commissioner Pierce? Sure, I'd just like to report that um, the weekend of April 26th, the San Bruno Lions are going to do their yearly upkeep of uh, the work that they accomplished last year at Beckner Shelter. They're looking forward to spending a day or two, if necessary, to keep that place shining and clean. So, April 26th. Thank you, Commissioner Pierce. Okay, we're down to item I, agenda building. Uh, I heard one item mentioned tonight from uh, oh, Carrie, and that was uh, our next agenda would contain something about the Adopt a Park program. Yeah. Through, through the chair, do we also have, uh, are we finished with the commissioner's report? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Obviously not. <laughs> Commissioner Greenberg. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mike. Um, I just wanted to uh, clarify that um, Junior Giants, which is my love of, of this world, is having their uh, signups on Saturday, May 3rd at the San Bruno Library from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And anybody who gets in line, it will sign up for Junior Giants, and Junior Giants is awesome in the respect that it's not only baseball, but it, it delves into character building. Um, they have education program, health programs, violence prevention, like strikeout bullying. So it's more than baseball, and it's sponsored by the San Francisco Giants. The best part about it is that it's free. It's a free program. Nobody has to pay anything to play Junior Giants. So once again, our signups are Saturday, May 3rd, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock at the San Bruno Library, and my only advice to people is to get there early. I know I get there at 9 o'clock to open the doors, and there's already a Disneyland line, so get there early. That's it. Okay. All right, any other commission reports? No. Yes. Yes, one more. Commission Vice Chair Davis. I would also like to make a report. Uh, San Bruno Relay for Life will be held Saturday, April 26th. It's a 24-hour event with the opening ceremony at 10 a.m. And it's a pretty special event. If you've never been before, if you have a few hours to spare, come on out at 10 o'clock in the morning for the opening ceremony. Or also come out in the evening for the Luminaria ceremony, which will be held at 8 o'clock. Again, that's April 26th at Cappuccino High School. Thank you, Vice Chair Davis. Through, through the Chair. Commissioner Pierce. Mr. Uh, Commissioner... Greenberg reminded me that uh, we should also announce that AYSO registration is starting and that the first registration night for returning volunteers is April 23rd, 6 to 9. Then it's open to the public, general public, uh, starting Saturday, May 10th, 9 to 3, May 22nd, 6 to 9, and also um, on Posey Parade Day, June 2nd, we'll be at the Park and Rec Department from 9 to 1. June 1st. June 1st. June 1st, that's an AYSO is celebrating their 50th year this year. So we're pretty excited about that. Thank you, Commissioner Pierce. Interim Director Burns. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I'm sorry, I forgot to add one more date to your already very busy calendars. We received word last week from Samtrans that they will be hosting an event at the Posey Park to celebrate the dedication of the new San Bruno train station. Um, that will be on Saturday, May 10. Um, the hours are still being developed. It sounds like maybe 11 to 2-ish, and they want to make it a family-friendly event. They've been working with the Community Services Department on identifying um, perhaps some music and family-friendly entertainment. Uh, the event is hosted by Samtrans, but we are assisting with logistics and providing them with some of the contact information that we have and use for our events. So. You'd add that to your schedule and keep an eye on the city's website for more details about the event. Do the chair, is that Caltrans or Samtrans? Caltrans. It's actually Samtrans that is hosting the event. There are a number of transportation authorities in San Mateo County um, in this particular case, and I, I can't explain the alphabet soup of them all, but it is Samtrans <laughs> that is hosting the event okay. on behalf of Caltrain. Okay. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good question. That's actually a good question. Posey Park. Yeah. Okay, Posey Park, Saturday, May 10th. Thank you. you. Thank you, Carrie. Um, now we're on to item I, agenda building. I heard one item, and that's uh, the Adopt a Park program. Is there any other agenda building items from the commission for next? Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that our next commission meeting is um, is our our facility tour, so uh, it's a little different how the meeting is conducted. Do the chair? I'm pretty sure there'll be a report back from the Centennial Committee right. to the commission. We can do that. Yes. Yeah. We can do that. Yes. Okay. And I wanted to add another item on the agenda. Um, we talked, I think, in the past about the minutes being action minutes and I, I know our Jackie does an amazing job but maybe the action minutes would be really less information that a lot of the information that you're taking down as notes are not required and that we can just report on action items so we can have that discussion at the next meeting okay any other agenda items and adopt agenda building items Interim Director Burns. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I, I think I made a mistake. In light of the fact that May is the facility tour yeah. meeting, it probably makes sense for us to come to you with the um, Adopt a Park program in, in June. And the minutes. As well as the minutes. The, the environment really doesn't lend Agreed. itself to a, yeah. I think that's, an easy conversation. Yeah. The, the commission, I think we, we agree on that. Okay. Uh, any further business? Being no further business, we'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you.